back up. Hey! Hi. Put it in reverse and reconsider why you don't need grace. As we're all fighting over <laughs> where everyone's gonna sit at the dinner table, right. we want you at the dinner table. Hi, I'm Lisa. I'm the Catholic Marathon mom. This is my friend, Emily Geminet. I have seven children, 19 to two. So I feel like the stretchy toy you get from the dentist and my kids take it and they're like, look mom, look at the arms, look at the legs, they just stretch. Yeah. That is how I feel as a modern woman. Let's be honest, where we live in our home, that's where a lot of times our biggest messes are as women. We might be fabulous at our job, we might be okay at our ability to do our service work in our communities, but really behind these closed doors, behind the brick and mortar, is where a lot of our pain is. Jesus is giving us a devotion with promises, and in those promises, miracles can happen. We were able to take part in the Sacred Heart Enthronement as a family. Our two youngest are still in the home, so they were part of it. So Sacred Heart Enthronement, what exactly does that mean? All right, I want to tell you, the th reason why I've gotten very involved in enthronement is it started out with, I've been collecting testimonies. It, can Jesus really be that miracle worker that we're longing for? The root of what enthronement means is that you're not just going to hang a picture on the wall for 30 years and, and pass by, but you're going to learn to honor him in your daily life. You're going to learn to welcome him in your mess, in your brick and mortar of your home and say, you're welcome here. This is the image of Jesus. He appeared to St. Margaret Mary in her convent and as a cloistered sister and in the ripe age of around 20 years old. She had only two years of formal education. Though in many ways she felt unequipped. For us moms, we might feel unequipped yeah. in many stages of our life. Jesus appears to her. His heart is this fiery furnace and he tells her, behold this heart that loves so much and received so little love in return. Really, he's received indifference, ingratitude, and even coldness. For me as a mom, I think of our current culture and I feel like many people are disengaged in their hearts. If that was the way Jesus felt in 1673, I am sure he really set this devotion up for our generation and every single generation. Absolutely. The word enthronement really means to place him as king, to put him on a throne. And what better place to enthrone him is in your home. It's really officially welcoming into your home as king and as friend. So saying, Jesus, we want you at the dinner table. As people, you know, trying to get those chore charts going and we're frustrated, we want you to be here as friend, as king, as Savior. Lisa, I thought I would share with you some of the promises Absolutely. of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and maybe how it applies to us as women, us as moms, taking in all of the input always coming at me. How is this going to play out in my faith? Like, how is this brick and mortar going to be sanctified to a stretchy toy? These promises are what we all need. So the first promise of those who really have a devotion in the Sacred Heart, and we'll talk about what that looks like, but the first one is I will give all the graces necessary for their state in life. Fabulous. I mean, who does not yes. want graces yeah. for their state in life? And I love that, that phrase because we all are in a different state of life. Yeah. I was with a group of women last night who were really empty nesters. Mm -hmm. And they said, I have nothing to my resume. <laughs> it's wow. almost a blank slate. All my years of service in the schools, wow volunteering, changing diapers. It's not on my professional resume. Here marks a new moment in my life. We, we were speaking earlier about the young mom in her 20s. Just all of a sudden that first pregnancy test, the opportunity of engagement, the excitement that goes with that of taking on the vocation of, of really being a wife called to marriage because the devil is out to ruin marriage. He's out to bind us to sin yeah. and to distract us to what is most important. You need those graces. The second one is really powerful. I will give peace to their family. Another miracle is if when we hear about a family that is functioning peacefully, you are taken back. And we've all had those moments that it feels peaceful, but God is offering a peace that doesn't have to do with consumption of material items. It doesn't have to do with indulgence of birthday parties and fun. His peace is eternal. And I think that is most important for all of us to recognize that 
peace is possible in the home and marriages, our relationship with our teenagers. And I get a lot of people interested in this devotion when I say <laughs> peace in their families. That does not just mean their dependent children that right. live in their home. It could also be their children outside of their home. It could be as grandparents peace to their grandchildren by living a devotion to the Sacred Heart. You welcome him and you call him protector and provider of your family. Mm -hmm. So you can actually call on him in a new way. And one woman was even a widow for 30 years and said, I have turned to him as my protector and provider. Beautiful. And to tell your husband, Jesus is actually your, our protector and provider. Mm -hmm. You, as all of us are obedient to him and he will use us really as instruments. The third one, I will console them in their troubles. If you do not have troubles, if you do not need consoling, then we need to have a little heart surgery here, a little <laughs> transplant. Right. And, and I tell women that even if you can be emotional, that means that your heart's working. Our hearts need to be tenderized. Mm -hmm. And yet Jesus wants to console us in what burdens us. And part of it's our attitude. Our own attitude can ruin our day. Or even that sin of self-reliance, that's something that I continue to tackle. The more that I re realize to allow him to console me, my eyes are more open to it. And I want to be consoled. I know that I can't juggle it all. And Families need true consoling. We need to be consoled in a way that only the heart of God, the heart of Jesus can offer us. And one of the promises that he tells us is, I will bless the homes in which the image of my sacred heart shall be exposed and honored. And we need to learn to honor him. The fourth promise is, they shall find in my heart an insurance refuge during life and especially at their hour of death. We spend very little time thinking about the hour of our death. Right. We actually include that in our prayers yeah. a lot and at the hour of our death, amen. amen. You know, <laughs> We hear that all the time, but we don't really know how to prepare for that hour of death. True. This devotion is absolutely a way to be thinking about the hour of our death, not in light of what we do, but by invoking God's mercy onto our, ourselves, our family members, our loved ones. And one of the things the Sacred Heart promises to St. Margaret Mary and he tells her as he said he calls us to do nine First Friday devotion. Many of us of a younger generation we've never heard of this. Right. I never did it. I went to public school growing up. I'm actually doing it right now deliberately for the first time and on CatholicMom.com I have a little printout recording when you go to Mass but by going to Mass on nine First Fridays and offering it up as reparation for the sins and of others he's going to remember that at the hour of your death and he's going to recall all the love that you've given him it, it is so beautiful and it ties in this last promise they call it the great promise and it says the all-powerful love of my heart will grant to all those who shall receive communion on the first fridays of nine consecutive months the grace of final repentance they shall not die under my displeasure nor without receiving the sacraments. My heart shall be their assured refuge at their last hour. What an amazing thing to know that you are building that relationship with Christ where he's gonna in return say, he's even gonna give you the ability to have an opportunity to seek repentance. Cause we do know we have free will, right. but he's gonna give you those opportunities and make, put it on your mind to go to confession really be connected to the faith. I've been collecting testimonies. What happens when you enthrone a home? I can honestly tell you from the bottom of my heart, the emails, the phone calls, the testimonies I'm getting are, yes, he can work a miracle. If you are willing to welcome him into your heart and into your home, develop a relationship, understanding that he wants to be a part of your life. He knows that if we can receive that heart transplant that he wants to give us, true transformation can take place. For my family, we did the enthronement five years ago. Lisa mentioned we put the image on the mantle after seven days of preparation and prayer. We encourage people to say the rosary every day. My family was not at a stage, we were not there. But we did say a decade of the rosary every day. Yeah, yeah. We shared our intentions. We talked about this significant moment which was gonna take place in our family. I still remember when my husband took the image and put it on the mantle. We just gave our life to Jesus in a really special way. So one week later, my son was running on the treadmill. I called him up for dinner like I do you know, every night and he said, mom, I'm ready to take a nap. And I'm like, what? 
take a nap. Yeah. That's weird. But it was more than, you know, I'm a busy mom, like many of you. A lot of times we can blow things off and just be like, okay. But I knew it was running on the treadmill and I knew enough as an athlete, you are pumped yeah. after running three miles. You do not want to take a nap. You know, I had my God lenses and I'll call it, you know, <laughs> that or the enthronement. And what I did is I called the police department and I had them come out and check for carbon monoxide because I heard a little voice that said, it's carbon monoxide, wow. and it was. It was carbon monoxide, it was my furnace and my water heater, and the, the <sighs> technicians that came out, they left, they said, ma'am, we're getting sick in your home. Oh like, my God. your home has high numbers. It was such an awesome thing that like, Jesus, you are in charge of the physical well-being, the spiritual well-being. I've had many instances with raising teenage boys where the Lord will wake me up in the middle of the night and I find a child that needs me. You know, we know the Israelites were called to put blood over the doorway of their home to protect their home from the angel of death. At the Sacred Heart Enthronement Network, practicing and living out the devotion of the Sacred Heart, you are welcoming the person of Jesus Christ into your home. I send out kids all across America, you know. We, we're a little operation, you know, we have a little shop, we go down and we have volunteers put together these self-enthronement kits. We realize we got to get Jesus in people's homes and make them aware of the miracles that can take place. So how exciting is this that this exists and that this devotion, this ancient devotion is alive and well. There's going to be information in the description box below about it, how you can get in touch with the network. Have this beautiful blessing as part of your family's life and, and your home. Yeah, I love all these like airplanes flying over yeah, because okay. the fact is, <laughs> okay, we're, we're near the airport.